Okay, Eurobike 2022, day two. Come with me if you want to see some tech. Okay, so this is something that's been brand new on my radar that people have been flocking to the stand to see. So it's a brand new hub design by Classified, and you're gonna be able to get this from manufacturers like DT Swiss and Mavic on their own wheels. They've already signed up to it. So essentially you've got an internal hub gear that works in combination with the external cassette gears, replacing effectively what would be a two by on your bike. Now the cassette design in itself is exclusive to them, it's completely milled out from the back and it's actually some of the lightest cassettes you can actually even get. So the mountain bike equivalent that you'll want to know about is 1140 equivalent gear range, so that's 530% gear range, so that's even more than anyone else that exists currently. Um, and then you've got the internal gear shifts which you can shift under pressure, it's completely tucked away on the inside of the hub, it's got its own interface, so not like SRAM uh, XD and not like MicroSpline, you'd have to use this exclusive but you'll use the whole package together. You can shift under pressure, you've got 10,000 shifts you can do with this on battery life and even when a battery will emit like an orange glow to it, you've effectively got like another two weeks worth of shifting before you need to plug this thing in. You can have different choices of syncing it with DI2 shifters like you already have on a bike or you can use their own which is this tiny little um, blip I guess you could call this and you can just see it sort of doing its thing there and that can be embedded into your handlebar tape or you can have a tiny little ring for the mountain bike equivalent. It's a pretty wild piece of kit. There's a brand new design out there and everyone is talking about this. We're going to try and get on one of these and show you a bit more about it on the GMBN Tech Show soon. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go and try one over here to have a little feel this, try and get my head around how this works. Let's go have a look, shall we? So one of the whole points, this has been able to change gear under pressure. Uh, just got the little blip shifter down here. Literally, like, you can hammer that. It doesn't, doesn't matter. That's the same. You're doubling your gears, essentially. Now you might recognise this bike. When we were over at uh, the Sea Otter Classic in California, we actually went to the new facility where they actually hand make these over there in Watsonville, just between, roughly between Sea Otter and Monterey. Now since then, they've actually invited me back to build one of these myself. Now the process obviously is a little bit longer than what we normally do in a video, so we're trying to figure this out, but it looks like I'm gonna be going back at the end of the year, and I'm gonna have a go at building one of these, which is an insane thing to even take on. And I don't think we're going to get an opportunity like this. We actually get to lay up the carbon ourselves. Uh, so obviously this is the XC there, cross country frame, super lightweight. Uh, more information on it when I get it, but hey, we're going to build a carbon frame on GMBN Tech. And that is sick. And look at that, that's a work of art, isn't it? So it's well documented that the angle grinder is a thief's best tool really, as far as locks go. Uh, now hip lock, you probably know from making locks that you normally wear around your hip, but this is their first lock that really is a dedicated hardcore lock. Now this one, uh, they say is angle grinder proof, and of course anything on earth, technically you could break it with some in, but these ones are tested to the absolute destruction um, of the angle grinder and the discs apparently. So as you can see in here, this one has been harmed mildly, uh, they didn't get through this. They've actually gone for 10 minutes with a powered uh, angle grinder, so not even a portable one, which we would go through battery life and have to change the battery on them, as well as the actual discs. And you can see by the size of these discs, they've all been done. So I'm counting five discs plus the one that's on there, and it's arguably made a scratch in that lock. And the amount of time it would take to actually do that in the real world, you're not really gonna be able to nick a bike with a lock on, so really, as far as uh, getting into a lock goes, that is pretty outstanding. You might be looking at the burnt out cutting discs here, and the state of the actual lock there with a bit of a nick taken on there and thought oh you could probably get through that but you've got to bear in mind with a lock like that you've got to get through both sides of it and they've not managed to get through one yet that is seriously seriously impressive if you're looking for a strong lock for your bike that one's your money right now uh, so one of the coolest things about Eurobike, I say this all the time, is the people. At uh, long last, I've got to meet Danger Holm, who's been, I think, a friend of GMBN Tech pretty much from the beginning, from building, in the nicest way, the most ridiculous bikes ever. This is one of the latest bikes. Um, I just want our viewers to understand a little bit of what goes into this. So give us an indication of, I know, the weight of the overall bike and how long it took you to, to do this project, because this is complete custom at every level. Yeah, well, that's the thing with these bikes. They always takes a lot longer than, than expected. So it starts with, for example, getting the frame. And as you can see, it has been stripped down to bare carbon. 
And to do this, you can do it like fast in maybe 10 hours of work, but to do it a perfect job, to me it's like 30 hours of work, just stripping paint. And then there's a lot of custom polishing, custom painting and, and whatnot. So it's, it's quite the effort and as a, as a huge bike nerd, this is what I've been doing since I was a kid. You know, you had a 16 inch BMX bike and spray paint in it. And it's just a different level now, but still all good. You know how it is. Yeah, okay, so so overall weight, I can see you've written down there, 9.19 kilograms yeah. for this. Um, how long did it take to polish those forks? <laughs> Luckily, uh, Cornelius from Intend managed to get me a raw fork. So I only had to polish the, the crown and the dropouts. So uh, I don't know, it took me a day, maybe, <laughs> some sanding, some polishing. Tell us a bit about the rear mech as well. So see you've got like carbon parts on there and you've yeah. got the Kogel cage down the bottom there as well. Yeah, so the rear mech is actually one of my favorite parts on, on this bike. And I went with a mechanical on, on this one just because, of course, it's, it's lightweight, but also I just love the proportions of the mechanical derailleur. So it has a custom polished uh, B knuckle, which is the rearmost part of the derailleur. Yeah. Then the middle section, the parallelogram, is uh, carbon fiber from Hop Carbon. And even the pins holding it together is carbon fiber. And then there's a custom uh, Kogel Colossus oversized cage, which saves a bit of uh, friction when the chain goes through. So, and also it's a custom uh, paint. So the pink pulley wheels are Cerakote, which is a ceramic based paint, which durable enough, but it looks very different from uh, anodizing. So it gives a cool look. Okay, new grips from Ergon. These are the GXR team. So this is a cross country focus grip focus on being extremely lightweight. So they come in three diameters, the team size, which is 30 mil, then 32 and a 34. Uh, why do they choose to run the smallest one? Because they're lightest, clearly. Cross country racers love push on foam grips and they're gonna be loving these as well. Now these ones are the team colors that are available in that 30 mil size. Uh, the 32 and the 34 come in more conventional colors for the Ergon Star range. You're talking about the greens and the grays, translucent colors. I tell you what, that is insanely light and the rubber compound feels so soft. I'm gonna be getting a set of these. Now also, we do get a lot of questions about wrist support on grips. Now don't forget, they've been specialized in making these grips with wing support on them. They're a little bit different as well to ones I've been showing you recently. So I'll have shown you the GA3, which uh, essentially is an Enduro grip that has a molded rubber wing, but these ones actually have a plastic support built in with rubber over the top. So if you've got a dodgy wrist, Something like this can be really, really good for you. Now these ones are the GS ones. So again, they're not focused around hardcore trail riding or hardcore enduro, but they've got support. So if you're doing miles, something worth considering. Now I'm a big fan of the GD one, which is their downhill grip, but I've just noticed the GFR one, which is the one that uh, Tiny Seagrave and racers like that have been developing. It's a slight variation on that grip. So it's got a small flange, just like the GD ones, but it's using that mushroom grip profile on the top. And if you've never used a mushroom style grip, check them out because they're really good for shock absorption. So that buzz that comes through to the bars, they're really good. And it's got a bit of like a waffle style print on the underside, so you've got finger grip. Uh, and again, real nice soft rubber. So great if you love gloveless riding, essentially, but always cool to see new stuff from Ergon. Now this one's a surprise to see. So Nolly bikes associated with Whistler Bike Park, Canada, hard riding. Anyone has heard of this brand will be well familiar with how plush and how bomb-proof the bikes have been in the past. Now this one's a prototype of a Chilcotin bike that's going to be coming out fairly soon. Essentially the tube set's just a little bit different from uh, the production one. Now a few cool things going on here with this bike. Well obviously firstly it's just raw alloy so it makes it stand out. You've got a prototype stick on the top tube there. You can run it, it's almost two different bikes. So it's sort of a 150 mil travel, or like this one with a bigger shock on here, uh, just as a shade under 170 mil there. So quite a big travel enduro bike. Now, as you can see, it's got four bar back end and like Nolly have always done, I've had a slight revision on this. Uh, essentially, it's a really efficient back end and what you do to the shock basically is kind of different in the way it affects the back end of there. So you run these bikes at like 30% sag, which is quite a lot more than a lot of brands tend to run, you get you know 20%, 25%, but they say running there's a 30%, then you can really control the, the ride of the bike by using the four-way damping on the shock absorber there. Kind of reminds me a little bit of how the Mondrakers were, where you've got such an efficient back end that you've got a fairly light tune, so what you do to the shock makes a significant difference in the way the back rides there. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's got a pretty wild seat angle going on here. What's going on in the modern day world? But actually, if you look at the virtual seat angle, 
it's flipping steep. That's it's just 77, eight, I think they told us. It's just under 80 degrees. So that is actually mega steep, but the way I've designed it uninterrupted is even on the smaller size frames, you can get a 200 mil dropper straight in on there. That's actually like ridiculously cool. Uh, they've got proportional geometry as well. So change stays will grow as the frames get bigger. And behind us, they've got a few other models there, short travel, but chill coated, I think that's like the talking point frame. Always was a fan of these bikes and yeah, nice to see it back. Camelback have got a new reservoir system available to you. Now it's available as a hop up aftermarket or with some packs. Now, as you can see, this is the traditional style Camelback opening. It's got the big cap on the top. You can fill it full of ice, nice and easy to fill up as they always have detachable hose system on there. But their latest one, which is inflated with air randomly at the moment, uh, has a waterproof zip lock at the top here. So for some people, that's gonna be a really beneficial way of getting into there. Uh, it's no leak system whatsoever. Same thing again, you've got the removable hosing system on there and you've got protector built into the back. Just a slightly improved vision on a classic design. So every now and then at places like Eurobike, you're gonna get something random just walk up to you in an aisle, just like this wheel. So this is 27 and a half inch wheel, spoked carbon blade. Uh, this is exactly how it comes out of the mold, by the way. The finish is insane. So even if you prefer a spoked finish, that I'm telling you is unbelievable just to feel this. So they've got obviously got a sealed rim bed straight out so you can set them up tubeless immediately. But the hub is something I wanna to talk to you about. Uh, in fact, just before the hub, this one's a 30 mil internal, 27 and a half, and exploring other options. Company name is Lavelle, British company made in North Spain. Hub using SKF bearings here, and it's using a Sprag clutch. Now, in case you're not aware of Sprag clutches, they make for a completely silent drive, which in my eyes is something very, very cool. Now, there's a couple of other companies that make Sprag clutches out there, but the problem is that you might find with them is that the loads that they're tested to. So many of them will only be tested to 100 newton meters of torque to put through them. And the reason being, because of the way the Sprag clutch system works, is they can slip if too much load goes through them. This one's tested to 350 newton meters. That's almost as much as they test car products to. So there's absolutely no danger of that. And the bearings on there, unbelievable. We've recently been looking at stuff from ceramic speed at the show. I've got to say, this is up there with that in terms of how little friction there is. Uh, and I'll just show you as well, just on the inside of the Sprag clutch hub here, just so you can see a little bit of how this works. And you've got stainless steel surface here, which is perfectly smooth for the engagement of that. Really easy to maintain as well. I'm really interested in that. Ah, another day in the bag, Eurobike 2022. Uh, I'd love to know what you loved from today's video. Was it any better than what you saw in yesterday's video? And will it be any better than what you're gonna see in tomorrow's video? Make sure you tune into tomorrow's video. Let us know what you think about all the cool new tech we spotted here at Eurobike in Frankfurt. I'll see you tomorrow's video. See you later.